Good morning, third grade. Happy Monday. I hope you guys had a great weekend celebrating your moms. Um, Mother's Day was on Sunday and, and Mother's Tea was just on Friday. So I hope everyone was able to tune in and see all those videos. Kalani, you surprised me so much with that um, introduction to our third grade song. That was so neat and you kept it a good secret because you never told me that you videoed that. So I loved seeing you, that really made me smile. Um, we are starting um, another chapter in Bible this week and we are doing um, another trip of Paul, okay? We've been learning about all his missionary trips, but this time Paul doesn't travel for fun, like on his own to go out. He's actually a prisoner on this last trip. And we're gonna kind of see how that happened, okay guys? All right, so I have a little story to read before we start. Um, this is just for you to listen to. And then we're gonna look up a word in our Bible workbook, okay, after I read the story. Okay, in this is a true story. In September 2002, a group of about 200 students and staff found themselves trapped inside the International Christian Academy in Africa. It was in a little city in Africa. Most students were missionary children from other countries. The government soldiers fought on one side of the school and rebel fighters fought on the other side of the school with the school trapped in the middle. So they weren't fighting, but there was two groups of people fighting on either side of the school. Students heard the gunfire, but safely stayed in their buildings. For a week, the students prayed and bravely waited. Finally, French soldiers rescued everyone at the school. Okay guys, so what we're focusing on here is the what the students did in the danger. They prayed and they courageously trusted God to save them and he did, right? So I want us to look up the word courageous in the back of our Bible workbooks. I get mine here. So let's see if we can find courageous. Nice C's. There we go. Courageous. Let's read it together. Very brave, even when afraid. And I want you to think of that, guys, because courageous doesn't just mean being brave and you're not never afraid. It's being brave even when you're afraid. Because it doesn't take courage to do something that doesn't isn't hard or isn't scary for you, right? That's just you doing what's fun, right? When you have courage, it means you're being brave even though we're scared or afraid or nervous, okay guys? So that's the word we're kind of focusing on today to see um, who in the Bible was showing this courage, was being courageous, okay? All right, so um, before we open up our Bible workbooks, um, I want to tell you guys, so when we left off with um, Paul's third missionary trip, um, he went back to Jerusalem. And remember, a lot of his disciples, his friends, not disciples, his, the other, um, his other friends, the other Christians that were in the cities were saying, like, don't go back to Jerusalem. You know, they're going to, they don't like you there, you know, because Paul was the traitor, right? He was supposed to be hunting the Christians, and now he's one of their biggest um, preachers getting the, the message of Jesus Christ out. Okay, so they knew if you go back there, it's not going to be good. Well, it wasn't good. They arrested him and they had like a trial for him in Jerusalem, trying him for all kinds of stuff. You know, you did this, you did that. And it lasted two years. Well, finally, Paul was like, I am a Roman citizen. You guys remember that? He was a Roman citizen and that's how he was able to travel through the road so easily because he had like his passport type of thing. Okay, so because he was a Roman citizen, Roman citizens have the right to have their trial heard in Rome, okay? And so he said, I want, I am a Roman citizen. I demand my rights. I want my trial to be heard in Rome. And so they had to do it. So now he's a prisoner and they're gonna sail they're gonna sail, part of it's sailing, part of it's walking, but most of it's gonna be on a boat. And they're gonna be sailing 
to Rome. And I'll show you guys on the map that later so you can see exactly how far this trip was going to be. Okay. Um, what I want us to do right now is get our Bible. Let's see here. And you know what? I wasn't good about putting my pages. So I'm just going to tell you guys. We are on page 125 in our Bible workbook. 125 in here. All right. Once you have that, set it aside because we don't need it quite yet. And then in our uh, Bibles, we are on page, I'm looking here, Acts 27, verse 9. Acts 27, verse 9. And this is on page 1248. 1248. 1248. So I'll wait for you to find that. If you need to pause the video, Acts 27. And we're going to start on the little nine where it says Paul's warning ignored. And it's on page 1248. It looks like this. It's got Zacchaeus on this page on the other side of it, but we're right here. Okay. All right. So here we go. Paul's warning ignored. So they're on the boat. He's a prisoner and they're traveling, and Paul gives them a warning. Let's see what warning he gives. Now, when much time had been spent and sailing was now dangerous because the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Men, I perceive that this voyage will end in disaster and much loss, not only of the cargo and ship, but also our lives. Nevertheless, the centurion was more persuaded by the helmsman and the owner of the ship than by the things spoken by Paul. The, if you kind of think about it, the, the soldier in charge, is he going to listen to a prisoner? No, right? He probably thinks, oh, the prisoner's trying to trick him or something. So Paul, though, he gets messages from God, right? We know that God, the Lord has spoken to him, that angels have spoken to him. And so when he gets a message we should believe it, right? But the centurion doesn't know this. So he's like, ah, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. We're fine. We're, we're going to continue on this trip. Okay, we're on the little 12. We're going to read, this is the last little one we're going to read and we're going to skip down. And because the harbor was not suitable to winter in, the majority advised to set sail from there also, if by any means they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, opening toward the southwest and northwest and winter there. Okay, so they're like, no, we're going to go. We're going to get to this harbor. We can stay there while the winds are bad, and then we'll, we'll keep going. Okay, but they don't want to listen to Paul. All right, so now we're going to turn the Zacchaeus page. Turn again. We've got a lot of picture pages here. And we're going to go to 1249, where we see the little 21. So we're jumping to the little 21. Okay. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not have sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. So when they traveled, they ended up meeting all these bad winds on their way to that harbor and um, had to throw things overboard, and it was it was bad. So he's basically saying like, I told you guys so not to do this and you still did it. And now we're on 22. And now I urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. So he's saying, okay, I told you not to do it, but now I have another message. No one here is gonna die on this boat, but the boat is gonna get destroyed. Okay, so he's saying there's gonna be a problem with the ship that everyone on the boat is going to be okay. So like, don't worry, we're going to be all right. Okay, we're at 23. For there stood by me, we turn the page, this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, do not be afraid, Paul, you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So basically, the angel is saying, don't worry, Paul, you're going to get to, you're going to get to Rome. You're going to get your trial before Caesar. 
And since you're with all these men, they're all gonna get there with you too, okay? All right, however, we must run aground on a certain island. Okay, oh wait, sorry, I, missed, I skipped the verse 25. I'm gonna go back to 25. He says, therefore take heart, men, for I believe that God, I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Okay, so basically saying we're going to be okay, but we gotta, we're going to have to basically get shipwrecked on an island, <laughs> okay? So they're probably like, what is this guy talking about? How does he know these things? Are we to trust him? But right now, they're, they're just not sure. Okay, we're going to skip down to the little 33, um, and we're going to read 33 through 38. And as day was about to dawn... Paul implored them all to take food, saying, Today is the 14th day you have waited and continued without food and eaten nothing. Therefore, I urge you to take nourishment, for this is for your survival, since not a hair will fall from your head of any of you. Okay, so they, they've been going through bad weather and just scary situations, and, I, and, they're, and they're not eating um, I think they're worried that if they get shipwrecked for a long time, they're going to run out of food. But Paul says, Paul knows they're going to be saved and no one's going to be hurt. And they need food to have energy, right? So he's like, guys, you have got to eat. We need to get some nourishment. Okay, so now we're on 35. And when he had said these things, he took bread and gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged and also took food themselves. So seeing Paul eat and seeing him pray, they're like, all right, they just whatever got a sense of trust and they started eating too. Now we're on the 37. And in all, we were 276 persons in the ship. So that's how many people were on this boat. So when they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and threw out the wheat into the sea basically knowing, okay, this boat is falling apart. Let's eat what we can. And then, um, and then to lighten the load so the boat wasn't so heavy, they threw the extra food over the boat. Okay. All right. So now we're on little 39, shipwrecked on Malta. When it was day, they did not recognize the land, but they observed a bay with a beach onto which they planned to run the ship if possible. And they let go to the anchors and left them in the sea, meanwhile losing the rudder ropes, and they hoistened the mainsail to the wind and made for shore. But striking a place where two seas met, they ran the ship aground, and the prow struck fast and remained immovable, but the stern was being broken up by the violence of the waves. So it's like, you know, sometimes waves crash into each other. Well, when the waves crashed into each other, it broke some important parts of the boat and the boat like got either got wedged or got stuck. Maybe the water is getting shallower here. And so um, the, the boat is falling apart. 42. And the soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners lest any of them should escape, should swim away and escape. But the centurion wanting to save Paul kept them from their purpose and commanded that those who could swim should jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. So they, were, they saw the boat was falling apart, and some of the soldiers were like, we better kill all these prisoners. If they escape and you know, swim away, we're going to be in trouble. And the centurion, who now is like kind of trusting Paul and realizing, hey, like a lot of the stuff that he's saying is coming true, was like, no, don't do that. So everyone who could swim jumped over and just swam to that island. People who couldn't swim, they said they held on to parts of the boat. Like, so if like wood siding was falling off, they would hold on to that and use it like a boogie board and paddle to the boat, I mean, to the, um, to the island. All right, and that's where we're stopping today. Um, we're gonna find out what happens on the island tomorrow, all right? Okay, so let's get our Bible workbook out. Open up to page 
dropping my books, open up to page 125, um, where you see the sailors and they're here. I'll, let me put it up on the screen here. I'll share my screen. I'm hoping this is working today. Okay, let's see if this comes on. There we go. Okay, good. All right. So let's look on this page, Journeys Paul to Rome. This is page 125. Okay. All right. Let's read the directions first. Okay. We already have read Acts 27, but we're going to um, see what they want us to do. Draw a line through the error in each sentence. Based on Acts 27, write the correct word to make a true statement on the blank. Okay, let's see all that you guys remembered from, her, from our story today. All right, number one, Paul was a tourist on a ship. Guys, was Paul a tourist? No. Okay, let's cross out tourist. What was he? Yes, he was a prisoner. I'm going to make this just a little bit thicker here. Prisoner. P-R-I-S. O N E R with your neatest writing. Good job. Paul was a prisoner on a ship. The ship was going to Jerusalem. Was the ship going to Jerusalem? No, he was already in Jerusalem. Where was it going? To Rome. That's right. Okay, cross out Jerusalem and write Rome on this line. Why am I capitalizing Rome? Because it's the name of a city, right? Cities and states, countries are all capitalized. Okay, number three, there were 20 people on board the ship. There was way more than 20. Does anyone, anyone remember that number? It's interesting that Paul specifically noted how many people were on board the ship. Did anyone get it? 276. Gosh, it's a lot of people. All right, number four. The passengers on the ship were so worried they could not eat any candy. <laughs> it was starting out to be true. Not candy. They just couldn't eat any food. Yeah. They were so worried they were going to die, maybe worrying they needed to save the food for for who knows what, for later, um, but no, it wasn't, it wasn't candy. Okay, number five. Paul knew they would be safe because he listened to the sailors. Was he listening to the sailors? No, he was listening to God, the angel, right, who was speaking on behalf of God. Okay, so to the, what do we want to say, angel, I'm going to say angel and God. Okay. All right. Number six. Some of the people were safely delivered from the shipwreck. Were only some of the people safely delivered? No, all of the people. So we're going to cross out that word some, and we're going to write the word all. All of the people were safely delivered from the shipwreck. All right, let's go down to this next part. Paul chose to be courageous during the ship's long journey. Complete the following sentence. I need God's help to be courageous when, so when is a time, this is gonna be different for everybody, right? When do you, when do you need God's help to be courageous? So remember, it doesn't take courage to do something that you're already brave in. So say like you play um, soccer and soccer comes really easy to you and it's fun and you just have the best time. Well, it probably doesn't take much courage to play, right? But what if I wasn't very good at soccer and I was nervous and I was just afraid that the ball was going to come my way and I wasn't going to know what to do, but I really, I was just trying to like, learn a new skill and, and try the best I could, well, yeah, that, then I would need courage, right? To get on that field and not be afraid when the ball came to me, right? And I, you know, just do the best that I can, all right? So think of a time when you feel afraid. 
So sometimes people feel afraid um, at nighttime when it when the when it's dark when they can't see, right? Uh, some people feel afraid, um, like if they're um, if they you know when they can't find their parent. What if they're in a store and they look around and they can't see where their mom or dad is, right? I know that as a little girl that always made me afraid. Some people get afraid when it's time to take a test. They get nervous. I'm not going to know the answers. Some people get afraid when they're trying to make friends. Are the kids going to like me? What do I say? Right? There's all different, different times when we feel nervous or afraid. So I want you to write down when, and if I didn't say, if you were like, no, Miss Roach, none of those things you said, I want you to think of a time when you were afraid or times when you feel most afraid and write that in. So I need God's help to be courageous when, for Mrs. Roach, I'm going to put um, when my family or friends are sick. So sometimes I get really worried. And instead of trusting God, I just worry, worry, worry. And so when, when like my mom fell and got hurt, I was so worried, you guys. And even though I knew we were all praying, I was just, my brain was thinking the worst thing. And that's when I need to be courageous and trust that God really does listen to our prayers, right? And so that's something for me that just happened recently that I thought of. But so you think of something for you. Don't write mine down. Write something where you're feeling um, when you need God to help you. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop sharing this screen so we can pray together. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so today is Monday. What do we have today? We've got our Bible and our map. Um, oh, I didn't get to show you guys. I forgot. This was part of my new display today. So Zafira got me this cute little llama. You see the cutest little thing? I planted these, um, they're called jelly beans. I think they're called jelly bean succulents. Anyways, um, <laughs> they're, a, they're a type of sedum succulent, um, but they do remind me of jelly beans. So I don't know if I made that name up or if they really are called jelly beans, but he was so cute. And I'm probably going to take him back home. I got so many cute plants from you guys. So I've got one from Mikey in my living room. I got one from Charlotte in my backyard. And I just planted this yesterday. And I said, oh, I'll bring him in for the video so he can, we can see him because he was small. He was easy for me to carry. Um, but guys, um, I just, uh, I kind of got sidetracked there. Sorry. <laughs> so we've got our Bible today. We've got our math today. There's no language. And then we have reading groups, okay? So I'll be calling all of you um, to, to read the next part of our story um, together, okay? All right, so let's pray um, together. Let's bow our heads. Dear Jesus, I just love you so much. I thank you for my third graders. I thank you for the moms and, and all the teachers, Lord, that helped this last weekend to just go so well with our mother's tea, um, doing it at home and getting to honor our moms for how special they are, Lord, and all that they do for us. Um, I pray, God, that um, my students are um, holding strong and being courageous through all, the life, all of life's difficulties that are happening right now, Lord. I pray that they know how much you love them, how much I love them, and that you never leave us, that you're always with us. Um, through the good times and through the hard times and that you are strengthening us, Lord. I pray that the kids will um, rely on you, trust in you um, whenever they're afraid or whenever they need um, more courage, that they turn to you for that courage. We love you so much. Bless us today and this week. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, I will see you tomorrow um, in, our, in our Bible video and obviously the rest of our videos today. All right. Bye, guys.